Welcome to Reptilian Diaries, Western Australia series. I'm Frank. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is a reptile field herping extravaganza of a channel and uh, happy to have you. Now, we're in Shark Bay. You're going to have to excuse the wind throughout this whole episode because it was crazy. What is Shark Bay? Why is it important? Well, it's a kick-ass spot. It's on the western coast of Australia. It's actually one of the furthest points you can be in Western Australia. It's home to the ever-elusive Woma, which is a beautiful python. There's dope geckos here, beautiful scenery, and we're looking for all of it. Let's do it. All right, Shark Bay, we made it. Last night was pretty darn epic. We found some good geckos. Just waking up, got a nice little spot. It dumped rain this morning and now it's nice and warm. And uh, gotta look for some bulbs today, eh? I'm just charging up some batteries, drinking some coffee, getting organized, and then uh, go see the ocean. Fly the drone, walk the trails, see what we can find. Emu sitting in the road here. Right at this cool ass playground that I'm gonna bring my daughter to one day. Shark Bay. Beautiful ocean. Definitely bringing the drone up. This place is, uh, is really neat. Yeah, we're gonna be here for a few days, so this place is home for a bit. It's really cool. Cape Peron, this is the very tip of Shark Bay. It's really pretty dope up here. There's lots of tracks in the sand. Red sand, freaking white beach, blue water. Let's fly the drone, man. This is awesome. How's that for scenery? Woo! That's freaking sick. Wow. Came out here to Peron, Cape Peron, the very, very tip of Shark Bay, the peninsula. Just checked out the birds. It's way too hot for reptiles right now. We we're just doing a little recon. We got in the water, swam around a little bit, cooled off, just kind of did fun stuff. So now we're gonna head back, hit the supermarket, get some brewskis. Get some brewskis. See about lunch, because we're gonna hit the roads and maybe like a short hike, late afternoon, late Arvo to uh, look for skinks, cool. snakes, whatever we find. So, we did not end up looking for reptiles in the afternoon. Uh, we've been going pretty hard, pretty hard every single day. So we ended up going back to the spot. We had some beers, we made some food, and uh, we just chilled, man. It was a nice afternoon. We kicked back, got some rest, got ready for the night, and, um, and then we hit it. All right, so we're out. We came out to uh, out to the dunes to look for a super special gecko, um, Strophorus michelsoni or Strophorus michelsoni, and uh, Diplodactylus ornatus. They are dune dwelling uh, spinifex and just dune scrub dwellers. 
and uh, I haven't seen very many photographs of these things. I haven't seen anything about them, so I definitely wanted to check them out. And uh, we just came out and found Strophorus Michelsoni. These guys are photographing it. And check, ch 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 check it out. It's dope. <laughs> All right, lights. Kind of phasmid spin effects dwelling animal. And they leave the spin effects at night and they climb up into these nasty little branches and they just hang there. And the stripes on these things, look at that, look at that pattern. That pattern is just insane. And they do the whole, uh, they do, they'll squirt their tails just like normal diplodactyl or normal strophe as well. How they hide. I don't know if you guys can be able to see this. He's right there, right in the center of the screen. And they hide right in the spin effects like this. And then when a predator comes. So they hide right in the spin effects like that. And when a predator comes, they just dip down in there. And that shit is sharp and it like irritates your skin and you can't get them, and predators can't get them, and it's, it's a perfect situation. Good find, Greg. So bam, we just found Diplodactylus ornatus also. Same habitat, they're tiny little things, but they're beautiful animals. See that little guy? So they're just tiny little things. And that's Diplodactylus ornatus. Living in the sand. Yeah, they're beautiful, they're small. Maybe that's a young one, I think it is. Maybe we'll find a bigger one. If we do, I'll probably film it. But for now, we're gonna take photos of this little guy. All right, let's do it. So Strophurus Michelsoni, wow. What a sick little gecko. I mean, I was super excited to see these things. And when I actually did, they were they were better than I thought they were going to be. They, they blew my mind. They were just epic. I thought they were going to be super, super tiny. Something like a genie or something. But they're big. I mean, they're, they're nice-sized, solid, just kick-ass little geckos. I mean, really neat. And uh, really spotty distribution. you got to find the microhabitat. If you don't... You could be 10 feet away from them, you're not finding them. So, microhabitat. Diplodactylus ornatus, cool. They're, they're like a Vitatus, uh, Forcosis type of gecko. Just neat though. You know, it's like a niche species. They're just out there in these dooney spin effects. I mean, right on the coast, right on the coast, damn near on the beach. So, uh, it's an interesting gecko to find. They don't have a big range. And, uh, you know, it was a box to tick. And that's what we're doing on these trips is we are checking boxes, kicking ass and taking names, really. <laughs> but the geckos were dope, super dope.
That's five foot. Look at that beauty. That is a beautiful snake. Solid muscle. Australian's finest. Dude, we nailed the Woma. I was like in shock, I couldn't even believe it. And this wasn't like a small little ratty Woma, this thing was big, five, six foot, solid muscle. This is the apex predator, more or less. I mean, there's parentes in Shark Bay, but in terms of snakes, this is the bad boy. These things can eat rabbits, rock wallabies, ground squirrels, obviously monitor lizards. That's what these Aspe the genus Aspidites specializes in eating lizards. So these guys are eating sand monitors, they're eating dwarf monitors, they're eating whatever they can catch. They're big and they're beautiful and it was unbelievable to find one. I mean, I know people who've lived in Australia their entire lives and hunted Shark Bay many times, never seen one. So to come there for three days and to nail one was like, it was, like a, it was a gift from God, man. It was dope. It was so sick to see one. So that's the second night in Shark Bay. We're gonna cut it here. Tomorrow night, which will be next episode, we head out to the furthest peninsula. Shark Bay is two peninsulas that sit right next to each other. Right now we're on the Perron Peninsula. Tomorrow, next episode, we'll be on the Edel Peninsula, which is in the cuts. So, some special animals out here. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned.